Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our family day, pre-Valentine's Day, uh, Chinese New Year Zoom mini class today. Uh, we're going to be making actually two projects that we're going to put together. Uh, I, when I was looking on Pinterest for ideas, I came across, you know, a couple of different ideas and I thought, well, why not throw them together? It makes a great little gift item and uh, you can use it for any occasion. I mean, obviously we're doing Valentine's today because today or tomorrow is February 14th, but you could do it for birthday. You could do it for Chinese New Year. You could do it for anniversary. You could do it for, you know, just because it can be for any particular um, occasion whatsoever. If you are joining me live, again, please remember to mute your microphones in the background. Uh, but if you have questions, just unmute and shout out and say, hey, Sherry, can you go over that again? Or hey, Sherry, uh, can you slow down? I'm happy to do all of those things if I'm going too fast. If you're watching on replay, by all means, pause, rewind, rewatch as many times as you want to or need to. So we're going to start off today with the outer part of our project, which is a mini pizza box. And I find this particular box super uh, versatile. I've put gift cards in there. I've put candy in there. And today we're going to be putting a mini album in there. So for right now, I'm just going to clear my space. And we want to work with a piece of cardstock that is six inches wide by 11 inches long. Now, once again, I'm going to show you this format with this, these measurements, but once you get the knack of it, you can by all means change those measurements and make this work for whatever uh, project you need it to work. Mm -hmm. Did you just get up? Yeah. Yeah. But that's good because you... There we go. Can you guys still hear me? All good. So we're going to take our piece of paper, like I said, six by 11 inches. Uh, if you want to uh, do one on scrap paper first so that you can write down the measurements, we can do that too. I'm just going to go right with my good paper, but I always like to just kind of sketch things out. So these are the directions we'll be following. You could always just jot them down on a scrap piece of paper or your mess mat as well. So we're going to start and we're going to take our six by 11 piece of cardstock and put it in vertically up and down in our scoreboard. And this one has really nice, easy measurements. Essentially, we're gonna do one inch from the left and one inch from the right. So we're gonna score it all the way down from the, uh, the one inch mark. And as always, I'm gonna remind you with scoring, you wanna start a little bit lighter and then build up that score line. If you push too hard, you could punch through the paper and we don't want that. So that was at the one inch mark. The next one is gonna be at the five inch mark and just all the way down. Give it a good couple of scores. And that's all we're doing on that vertical is one inch and five inch. Now we're gonna take this and we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. It could be left or right, doesn't matter. We just want it to be on the horizontal. Just like we did on the vertical, we're going to score at one inch at the top, or I guess on the left in this case. And we're going to do one inch from the outer edge, so 10 inches. So far, pretty easy, pretty balanced, one inch, one inch. Now we have to do the middle score line. So this is 11 inches long. Typically, the half inch mark would be the five and a half we're gonna go half an inch on either side. So we're gonna do it at five inches. And again, at six inches. So if you are modifying the, me the measurements to do a different size later on, that's the way to figure out your middle score line, just find the middle and go half either side. So now if I hold this up close to the camera, I'm not sure if we're gonna, yeah, I should be able to, to turn it. We've got one inch from the left or the, from the right, one inch from the left and a one inch strip down the middle. For right now, that's all the scoring we're going to do. 
the next step we're going to do is we are going to take our scissors and we are just going to cut along these little score lines, but only to the vertical. And we're gonna make some little tabs. So maybe just watch first on the first side. So I'm just cutting along that vertical line to that first horizontal line, just that little corner. In the middle, I'm gonna do both of those little score lines. Like so, so you've got that little tongue tab in the middle, don't wanna lose my notes. And once again, on the line at the bottom. So on their one long side, you have three little tabs. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Tab, 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 and tab. So we've got little tabs on both sides. We are now ready to form our box. So I like to just kind of go and fold on all of my score lines to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. I'm just doing it gently at first. Just I'm sorry. Um, what were the two middle score scoring ones? Like I have all the score pieces, but the, the middle ones. No problem. Five inches and six inches. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. So I'm just kind of going along all my score lines, making sure they do what they're supposed to. And then I will take my bone folder and I'm gonna go in and just really burnish these and make them nice and crisp. Even those little tabs. And I'm sorry that I may shape the table, so I apologize for that in advance. We need to get some sturdier tables. I just I really like just to give these that extra crisp fold so that it assembles really nicely and keeps its shape. There you go. Did I get all of them? Now I've lost track, but it's all good. Okay, so I have now flipped my paper over. Most cardstocks do have a, a slightly different um, texture on one side than the other. I've chosen to do the more textured uh, side on the outside. So I've got it with my inside facing up to me. And this is really the, maybe the easiest, but also maybe the most complicated part. We're just going to form our box. And the reason why we only have one piece here in the middle is because the top and the bottom are going to share that. So I find it easiest to build my bottom first. And maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna bend that back this way. So these two little tabs here have to attach to this long piece. And these two little tabs have to attach to those same long pieces to build our base. Four boxes and things, 3D projects and things that are gonna take a little bit of wear and tear. I do like to use my score tape but really you can use any adhesive that you like to use. Uh, just remembering if you are using a liquid glue, you wanna make sure you hold it until it sets before you move on to the next step. So I'm gonna fold those two little tabs in and just put some tape on it. Same on this side. And while I've got my tape out, I'm going to do the same on these little tabs as well. So they're folded in and then taped. So you should look 
like that right now where you've got two little tabs in the middle two little tabs at the bottom folded in with tape i'm going to do these bottom ones first so just peel my little backings and i'm going to align that fold oh i just froze okay align that fold with that edge to make my box repeat on the other side come on one and two align the fold with the outside edge and keep it nice and square so it's starting to come together same thing with these center tabs we're going to attach them in that same way to the bottom sides or the sides of the bottom box. Hold that up, align your fold once again with that edge. And align that fold with the edge. So there, the bottom of our box has now been assembled. All we have left to do is do the same thing with this little top piece, and then it's going to fold over and tuck in just like a pizza box would. So I need to put my tape on. So once again, I've got the inside facing me. I'm gonna fold in my tabs to apply my tape. And in this case, we only have the two top tabs. We don't have any other tabs to worry about. So it should go together pretty nicely. Align your fold with the edge of that side panel, like so, and repeat. There we go. So at this point, it's up to you whether you want your lid to go on the outside and be nice and flush like so, or if you want to be a little bit more like a traditional pizza box where it goes, you nope, know, you know what? And sometimes it tells you whether you're in the inside or outside, mine's gonna go on the outside because it wouldn't fit on the inside, but we're all good. So there is your pizza box. One last thing you can do to make it a little bit easier for the recipient to open up is I've just got a little teeny tiny circle punch. I'm just gonna punch a little notch. Oh, and I probably should have done it before I taped it. So let's freehand. I'm just gonna do a little X or a little V just like so so now you've got a little place to put your thumb to open it up the last thing we have to do with this little box is decorate it so right now the top of our box is four by four the inside panels are also, so the, the top inside and the bottom of the lid are also four by four. So I'm just gonna take some of my pattern paper and I want it to be a little tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to cut three squares that are three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. If you don't like eighths of an inch, feel free to go down to three and a quarter by three and a quarter. All that's going to do is give you a little bit of a bigger border around your uh, pattern pieces when you place it down. So three and seven eighths. 
this way. And then I'm going to cut it three times, three and seven eighths. One, two, and three. You may have this little strip left over. If oh, you will have this little strip left over. Don't throw them out just yet. They're always those things are always good for um, embellishing and decorating. So I am going to put because of the other thing I want to do on the front. I'm going to put the red heart side facing up on my box lid. And I'm just gonna use regular tape runner for this. Again, you're welcome to use whatever adhesive you prefer to use. And decorate my top. Make sure your hearts are going the right direction if you are, if you have a, or your whatever your directional pattern is. And then on the inside, I'm going to put my paper with the trucks facing up. So this is just lining the inside of our box. Just decorating. And that should just fit nicely. Just be careful of your directionalities. Hopefully everybody's good and with me so far. So one of the techniques that I showed during one of our coffee breaks on Facebook earlier this week was this idea of using positive and negative space. So what I did is I cut, well, I started by cutting a square and then cut that square into in half uh, so that I had two strips. And then I die cut out a heart shape from the middle. So one of these halves of each piece, I'm going to save for another project. This one I am going to attach to the cover of my box. Like so, but you know what I'm finding it's not showing up super well so i'm going to put a little bit of white behind it as well, how big was this this was. Three and a half so let me cut a three and. Let's do three and five eighths just so we have a little bit of a border. Three and five eighths by three and five eighths. And right now I'm just decorating. So if you want to leave your box to decorate later, you can just kind of stop and watch or do your own thing while we're decorating this box. So that should nest nicely. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tape my white square. Centering it here. I still have little bits of my red border showing. And then I'm going to tape this piece down. So this piece is going to go like this. And the little heart section is going to go on the other side. So it's like a mirror image. And the last thing I'm going to do is I just got a you are special sentiment stamp that I'm going to tuck in the corner here. Whoops. Yep. Didn't work because I'm on a box. There we go. And you 
you can add bling, you can add a photograph, you can add so many other things to the outside of your box. You can also take a piece of ribbon when we're done to tie it closed. It's pretty darn cute and pretty versatile. So that is our box. Now we have to make the little mini album to go inside. So just like with our matte piece, I wanted to go a little bit smaller than that four by four, which is why I asked you to cut two strips that were three and seven eighths of an inch wide. And we're gonna have three panels. So that's how I got my end measurement of 11 and five eighths. If you have, if you still have this at 12 inches, don't worry about it. We can always trim it down afterwards. But right now, you, the main thing you want is it to be three and seven eighths of an inch wide. And you're going to want two of them. You can absolutely scale this and make it bigger as well. And I will show you how um, to add more panels and more pages. It's super easy to make this little accordion album. We're going to start with just one piece and our scoreboard. Clear some space here. And we want our piece of paper to go in horizontally. And we're going to do two score lines. The first score line is going to be at three and seven eighths which is just between three and three quarters and four. Once again, do it gently and then build up the pressure. Because what we wanna do is we're building squares because it's gonna fit into our square box. So there's three and seven eighths. If we move along, we want to do another three and seven eighths because we're making another square. I've already done that math for you. It's seven and three quarters. So at seven and three quarters, you're going to do a second score line. And if you haven't trimmed your paper yet, you could do a score line at 11 and five eighths, or you just know that that's where you can trim it off. So we have two score lines, three and seven eighths, seven and three quarters. And we're going to make a Z pattern and just fold it back on itself like so. I am going to use my bone folder in a little minute, but for right now, just make sure that it's folded and that your edges all line up nice and square. Let's grab our second piece of cardstock that should be three and seven eighths by 11 and five eighths. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So at three and seven eighths, we're going to score. And again, at seven and three quarters. And once again, that should be folded as a Z. That should make you a little piece that folds down into three squares in that Z pattern. All right, scoreboard can go away. So now I'm just gonna take my bone folder and give these guys a really good crease. Making sure you keep that Z pattern with your paper. So there's one. And there's two. Hope everybody is with me so far. All right. The next step we're going to do, and actually let me let me put this so that my Zs are going the same way. So if you stack your two strips of paper so that the Zs are both going the same way, we are going to attach these two strips together 
like so. So if your pieces are like this, and it does help to look at it from above, I'm going to take my bottom piece and I'm going to put it here. See how those two panels overlap? Those are the ones that we're going to attach together. So for this one, again, because it's wear and tear, I'm going to use score tape. So keep this guy here where it goes on the back of this panel here. I'm going to put some strips of score tape. Just to make sure it stays good and stuck because as we start adding things to this, it's going to take on a little bit of weight. So the sticky part is going to go like this. Peel off the backings. Come on. I'm struggling with my backings today. They don't want to come off. So sticky side to the front. If you, it's probably easiest if you lay it down with the sticky side up and we're going to fold this down on top of it. Don't go right into the crease, come out maybe just like a 16th of an inch, just a hair. Make sure your edges are all lined up top and bottom. And voila you have a beautiful one, two, three, four, five, ten panel mini accordion album that's going to fit perfectly inside your pizza box. Now, if you've got your album in your pizza box, you can see that we've got extra depth. So if you want to add more strips, to your accordion album, it is so easy to do so. All you're going to do is continue to build, almost like building a caterpillar. You're gonna do another strip, mirror those two end panels, attach them together and move on. And you can add as many panels as you have paper for. You can alternate colors, you can do all kinds of different things. So that will fit nicely right inside your album or your box and all that's left to do is decorate so decorating can take any form that you wish just be cognizant when you start with your front panel if you want it to read like a book you want to make sure that your first fold is on that left hand side so that it opens up like a book alternatively you could do it this way if you wanted to have more of a vertical treatment. Totally up to you, but you really should make that decision before you start decorating so you know what direction to put your paper in. For decorating, because this is now three and seven eighths, we are a little bit smaller that, that, than that four inch mark. I'm going to cut my paper to three and three quarters. So once again, I'm just going to take some strips of my or some squares from my pattern paper at three and three quarters. And this is this is where coordinating lines work really, really well that you can use multiple papers, you can use scraps that you have left over from other um, other projects. Anything goes when it comes to decorating. So I now have three squares that are three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And the first one I may just put on nice and flush. Actually, I'm gonna take some of this brown ink so that's gonna bring in the brown from the box. And I'm just gonna do a drag technique and just edge up my my cardstock, my pattern paper, so it stands out just a little bit, finishes those edges. You could use a corner rounder. I had grabbed my inverted corner rounder and then forgot to use it. Um, really, this is the, the, the really fun part is the decorating. 
So this is just going to go on my cover. Then I'm going to just continue to open it up. I usually like to spread out the whole inside and then flip over and do the back side. Um, you can put pictures in here. You can mat them any way you want. You can make pockets. So what I'm going to do on this panel here, I'm going to flip over my red, but I'm going to take, no, you know, I'm going to do that little X, that little V like I did on the box. Just going to cut a little V here. And when I attach this to my paper, I'm only going to put tape on the two sides and the bottom so that it makes it a pocket. If I had thinner score tape, I would probably use that so that you have maximum room in your pocket. But if you've only got one width, that's totally okay. Make sure my opening is at the top. Center this on my little panel. And now I have a pocket that I could tuck a tag into or maybe a coupon or even a gift card. You can make your pocket as big or as small as you want. And the last little thing I'm gonna show you uh, for decorating, if you want to extend how many pictures you can put in here or how many different elements you can put in here. You, and Darlene's going to love this one because she always inspires me with this. We're going to do a little flip or a little flap. So on this panel here, I'm going to have it so that my pattern paper opens up. So all you have to do for that is take your square and I'm going to score a half inch line on that left hand side. just like so. When you apply this, you're only going to apply tape to that half inch section. One little strip should do. And how I like to align these when I know that it's going to cover the whole areas, I'm actually going to align this side first, get it where I want it, and then fold my flap over. That way I'm not fighting with the sticky to make sure it's straight. I know that it's straight because I've placed the rest of it the where, where I want it to go. So there you have it, ladies. Once you're done decorating, make sure you do both the front and the back. That can just fold right up. Oh, and I probably did it. Did I go a little too close here? That all folds in nicely, tucks inside your box. I'm going to take that out. The last thing I do when I am finishing up projects is my wet stuff, as I call it. So if I'm doing Nuvo drops or whatnot, that'll be the very last thing that I do just to make sure that it has time to dry. And maybe I'm just going to do some little dots down the center of my heart. Just finishing touches. So that is it for me today, ladies. Like I said, this is a fantastic little project that you can do for any occasion. You can do just the box, you can do just the album, or you can do like we did today and put it all together. Does anyone have any questions? Looks like everybody is good. So thank you for tuning in. I will just stop the recording and then we can go over any last minute housekeeping things. Thank you very much. Sherry. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry.